What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Logistical Styles coming at you with another video and today we are back in the shop and we are working or going over the photo booths a little bit more. It's been a while since I made an update to the photo booth uh, situation so I figure I might as well show you what I've been doing with it now. So I've made some changes. Well this is the almost the original this is closest to the original model that i've been building these two right here and these are what i've really been going with um, these are really my personal ones the ones that i rent out and use at events uh, of course you got to have a black and a white one some people like that all white look others don't really care i prefer the black um, for the look and the sleekness of it but uh, you can go either way anyway these are two slightly different booths. This is the 16 inch one that uses a USB plug to charge it. You can get a wall adapter or you can get a battery bank. I like using this one when I have places that don't have electricity available for me and I have to find a way to um, power this thing and using a USB uh, battery pack, I've been able to run this thing for about five hours straight over five hours straight with no issues. You've got your controls built into the wire and then there's also a remote control. Both of these have their own remote control. Um, so this is real handy. It's been working out really well. Still using the Velcro to attach the iPad case to the back of the wood. This is nothing fancy, just a piece of wood that I cut out into a circle and Velcro to the back of the ring light and then using Velcro to hold the iPad case in place. And I used a really good Velcro, the stuff they have when you buy the box of Velcro, it'll show you um, whether or how much weight it can handle. This is industrial strength Velcro. This particular uh, Velcro holds up to 10 pounds. So iPad is like what, one or two pounds? So up to 10 pounds enough is, this is enough to um, hold your iPad in place. And it's very, very, very strong. Um, pulling it off, uh, sometimes you feel like you might be pulling off the other Velcro, but you're not. Uh, it's just really strong stuff. And as you can see, I've got some black furry velvet right here. And then I've got the white right here and I can swap these out. I have a black uh, backing board as well. Uh, so that's the basic right there. And then I moved on to primarily using this one right here. This is the 18 inch. They both do the colorful RGB colors that go around in different patterns and then they do white and different shades of white. This one is just not as bright as this one. This one, this the reason I really jumped to this one is one because of the size and because of how much light it puts out. I'm not going to turn these on and blind you all with the light, but um, it is, it's very bright. And there's a difference. I was getting this for 16, 15, 16 dollars, and this is a 50 dollar light. It has controls up front for changing the colors or changing the brightness. And you also have a remote control that comes with it as well. On the back, it has the plug-in port for you to plug in your uh, adapter to get power from the wall. And then it also has two output, output USB ports. So you can charge your iPad while it's up in here if you have the right cabling. Now I will say it is a little bit tight depending on what iPad you use. Uh, this does not uh, accommodate an iPad Pro. An iPad Pro will not fit within here. So if you want to go with an iPad Pro, I'm going to suggest you probably get like a 21 inch ring light. And the thing about the 21 inch ring lights is they don't usually come in the, the different colors. They just do white, different temperatures of white, which is really fine because when people are using their photo booth and taking pictures, they don't really, that colorful stuff, the colorful lights are not really helping at all. In fact, it's probably making things worse. Everybody wants it and the proper thing you should be doing is putting it on some kind of a white light when you're taking your pictures. So um, the colorful RGB thing, I think it's kind of like, um, I don't want to call it a gimmick, but it's just extra fluff that doesn't really uh, pertain to taking good pictures. It's just there to get people's attention, I guess, in between sessions. If you have an attendant, the attendant could probably hit the remote and make the colors go to pull people in. People are like, oh, what's that? And they see the colors and they come in and then switch it to white when you're um, 
taking the actual photos. Now this backing plate is a little bit different because it has this cutout for the control, well, for the power port. So I had to get a little more creative with my jigsaw to cut it out. And I also built it a little bit differently. Like I'm still using the Velcro to hold it onto the back, but it's not just a one piece of wood that goes on the back. I put a secondary piece of wood in here so it comes in a little bit, it fits, it snaps in a little bit better. And eventually my goal is to get better with my router tool so I can actually route out a pocket that the iPad can fit in more snugly. So it's not gonna look like it's floating, it's actually gonna be floating in there. But that's, a, you know, that's something to think about for the future. I'm not really pushing too hard on that because the Velcro holding the case in place works really well. Um, I haven't had any problems with it. it. It stays in place with people taking picture after picture, poking on it, no problem. Uh, this does not have a height adjustable. Neither of these are height adjustable, but they do have a tilt. And a lot of the stability on this thing is really gonna depend on how tight you go. You don't wanna go too tight because these pieces are made of plastic and they will break and strip or whatever, and then you'll have to get another ring light. But you do wanna make sure it is snug so it doesn't wobble back and forth too much. Now, one thing I've been getting a lot of questions about in the video that I've had so far is, where do you get the foam to put on the inside to make it stable? Well, the foam that I was using, let me see. I was using this stuff. This is what comes with a road case when you have buy equipment, like your turntables, mixers, or whatever, you have a road case, and they give you this extra foam that you can configure the case for different size equipment. Well, I never throw that extra stuff out. I always keep them. And as you can see, I was just cutting out holes and holes for all the different booths I've made. And that's what I use. But everybody doesn't have access to that. So the next thing you can do is get something like this. This right here is uh, called a nailing pad. It's for people that work on like mechanics that work on cars and have to have their knees on the ground or whatever. You put this, it's a really big dense foam. It's the same exact kind of foam that came with the road cases, but it's a big piece. You can get this at any auto parts store, Home Depot, Harbor Freight, uh, Walmart. You can buy this anywhere and it costs like $10 or less. Maybe, maybe, maybe $15, depending on where you go. But you can get a whole bunch. If you're making a lot of these photo booths, you can probably get 10, 12 centerpieces out of this one piece of foam. Now, this is a little bit thicker than the road case stuff that I was using. But, I mean, thicker is not more problem. It's just that you're going to have to have a better uh, or a deeper hole saw. So, your hole saw is going to have to be able to drill into that. This one, usually once you break through into it, it cuts pretty quickly, so it wouldn't be a problem. You use your hole saw to cut that hole through, and then that center piece that's going to be, or that center hole that's going to be created by using this, you get a bigger drill bit, and I think it's like a quarter inch drill bit, just big enough for the pole of the, um, the ring light stand to poke through. And so that's what you do for that. Now, I am working on a couple of other things to make this actually even better and be able to manufacture it. Uh, yeah, just be able to manufacture it instead of just making it by hand. And I'll show you that in a little bit. But just as a quick review, because people have been asking me to put uh, information on how to build it again and the parts. This is three inch PVC pipe. You can get this from Home Depot. They sell it in this length. I think this is like a two foot length. No, maybe two and a half foot length. They have a little um, little cage with this and a couple of different sizes. They also have a four inch diameter pipe as well, already pre-cut. This is like $10 for this length. If you do it with these lengths, you're gonna need two. So that's like 20 bucks. And then you'll need to get a coupling, which is this piece right here that they both slide into to um, join them. 
Now, a tip, if you're gonna be making more of these, more than just one, you can buy 10 foot length of this PVC pipe. If you can transport it home, or maybe you can convince them in the store to cut it down for you, but you can buy the 10 foot length, 10 foot length for 20 bucks. So you, you buy a bigger length, you get a better value, especially if you're gonna be making multiple photo booths. So that's something to think about. Get the 10 foot length if you can, and then you won't even have to have the coupling. You can just cut it right to size, and then you'll only have the flange, and I think this was called a reducer increaser because it reduces and increases the pipe size, but you'll just have that in one big solid piece. And then the last piece you would need also is an end cap. This is what you use to cap off the bottom. Now you only use this when you're doing it with the three inch pipe. The four inch pipe, because it goes outside of the flange, you won't be able to do that. And I'm working on an idea to make that uh, work out a little bit better. And then the last piece is your wooden round, which is already pre-cut at Home Depot, $15. It's in the wood section. Make sure you check the quality of the wood. I've gone there a couple of times and had wood that was like cracked or split. Uh, so just make sure you get a good piece. And that's it. That's what I've been doing. Now you can go ahead and put the feet on the bottom so you can raise it up and have room to put like your battery pack under the base or if you want to put LED lights. That's all customization that you can do um, just ideas I've given you. Um, another thing, lighting. So I bought these from Walmart. They were on sale in the clearance section. I got it for $5 each. These were five bucks each. I can't remember if this part came with it, but this just a wand, USB-C, rechargeable, does different colors as well, just like the ring light. But if you need extra lighting at an event, these are really handy. You can look for these. Uh, they do get kind of expensive if you get a quality one. This, like I said, this was clearance aisle at Walmart for like $5 each. It's USB-C rechargeable. The battery lasts for about two and a half hours. So if you're doing an event, you're probably going to want to have a battery pack available or you might want to have multiples of these and you can just swap them out. Now, as far as for what's coming up in what I want to do to make it a better product, well, the next thing I'm going to be doing is, let me get this back to the color, back to the white. All right. Getting a little bit more complex with it now because what I'm doing is finding a way to, instead of using wood, I want to get this made in plastic. So I'm working with molds. Right now, this is a, a test, a failure test. But nonetheless, I learned something from it. This is what the backing is going to somewhat resemble. I started making this mold and didn't have enough plastic material. Um, so that's why it's incomplete, but it gives you an idea of what it is. This would be the wood back. This would be what I have now as a wooding back. And this is that raised part I was telling you about earlier that goes into the actual circle. How did I make this? I'll tell you. So I went to this, found this manufacturing store where they give you supplies and chemicals to make stuff that you want to mass produce. And they taught me how to make a silicone mold. This is a mold of this wooden back. So now all I have to do is get my choice of plastic. This time I was going with this rigid foam and this foam is really cool and you fill it in and let it cure and then you have a complete reproduction of whatever you made a mold of in this case it'll be this back so i'm working on making plastic versions of this now this i was using um, this is called rigid foam you can get all kinds of stuff this, like i made this out of silicone combine two chemicals mix it up real quick pour it in and then you get let it cure let it set you get this nice, this, I mean, it's rubber, it's silicone rubber. So you can use it over and over, pour more and more stuff in. So I use this foam it, it's rigid foam. This is like the most rigid foam you can get. Um, 
they have different densities and different pliabilities but this is the rigid stuff and it expands so you mix these two chemicals together mix them up and then once you mix them up for like about 45 seconds or so you have less than two minutes to pour it into the mold before it starts to expand and harden now my shortcoming here was I didn't have enough of the stuff. I only used one box. I should have used two, but this is what it did. I poured it in, it expanded out and hardened. This is hard plastic. That's what you make with this, uh, these chemicals. So I'm going to maybe, I'm going to use, uh, this stuff again, the same, uh, chemical and just going to double my, uh, amount that I use and see if I can get a really good backing plate out of this mold. And then once I perfect that, I'll make another mold of the more perfect uh, item. And then eventually I'll be able to produce these easily and quickly. Now it may increase the cost of the booth, but it'll also increase the quality of it. So that's what I'm working on. Um, so a whole lot of stuff, I've been busy, a lot of gigs. This is the end of the year, so we're starting to get all the holiday things coming in and we got to take advantage of it because, you know, in January and February, it's going to be really slow. So taking this time to really practice and perfect what I'm building. And I just want to shout out everybody that's been watching the videos. I know some of these get kind of long winded and I ramble a little bit, but I hope you've been learning and shout out to everybody who's purchased one, who has asked for help, who's built it on their own who's using it. Shout out to everybody watching, everybody. So I really appreciate it. And um, until next time, it's your boy Logistical Styles, and I am out. Peace.